Shalom, shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises, all honor, and all glory to God. Loyim la Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem. Double honors to the apostles and to the elders of Great Millstone who do rule well. Peace and salutations to the Akim across the four corners of the earth, pushing his truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and their freedom to do so. Shalom to the Akwat and the Akim out there listening and learning. Lord willingly, this is an edifying video. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad in the land of other nations, which appear like the other nations, but subscribe to this truth. To you, I say Shalom. It's the brother Yahweh Sop out of the GMS Cleveland Church. Fellow servant coming at you with another lesson through the spirit and through the power of Yahweh Bashan Yahweh Shai. And basically, um, I was reading the book of John. And um, I was reading John, the book of John. Um, and I was reading and I came across um, John chapter 6. And it was talking about um, when Yahweh Shai performed the miracle um, along with uh, around the multitude and you know it made me think because you know he 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 basically did a miracle which um resulted in feeding a multitude of people and being that you know the spirit is going into this famine that's coming because if you got spiritual eyes you can see his famine coming they orchestrating the man-made famine but it's gonna be a famine nonetheless you know um the brother Bukhar Moth went into the actual account when people think of famine, they think it's going to be no food. That's not the case. What the famine is, it's a scarcity of food. You know, um, it was a famine in ancient Egypt. That's why you had um, Jacob send his sons to Egypt. And just so happened, Joseph was the, the you know, the vicar or the, he was the second in command. I don't want to, you know, put in any words. Because I know a vicar is like a, a ruler, but I don't know if that was per se his title. I know he was the second in command. That's what the scriptures say. Anyhow. And that's why, you know, Joseph was able to be somewhat of a savior to his people because the Most High God set it up that way. That's why it's important to actually do the Lord's will as opposed to doing your own will. And I'm speaking to myself first and foremost. So um, I'm going to read this. And although I got to go to work, the scriptures say quenching out the spirit. Con, con. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at. Because I don't know where to start at, and this is a great chapter, so I'm going to start reading, um, let the Spirit take it where it's going to. Um, I got a few scriptures, so I'm trying to keep it as close to how I set it up, but if the Spirit leads me somewhere else, that's what I'm going to do. So um, this is the book of John, chapter 6. I'm going to start at verse 1. After these things, Yahweh went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. Verse 3, and Yahweh went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Verse 4, and the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh, so the Passover was near. Verse 5, when Yahweh then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, when shall we buy bread that these may eat? So basically, you got to remember, he was doing miracles. He was, um, you know, he was um, preaching because... Um, he was preaching, he was doing miracles. So people knew who Yahweh was. Uh, you had he had a following. You know, people were following him, but you know, this is a deep account. It says verse six, and this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. So basically, he was about to show another miracle. Verse seven. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. Because I forgot how many people it was. I know it was thousands, though, because there's two accounts where he did miracles where he fed the multitude of people. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among many? Verse 10, And Yahweh said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in a number about 5,000. Okay, God. So it's 5,000 men, and the Lord ordered them. You know, I, I, I think in another count he said, or um, set them down fifties and by fifties and one hundreds. And Yahweh took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fish as much as they would. Verse twelve: When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Verse 13, therefore they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over above 
Salakit, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. So basically, he took these five loaves of bread and two fish and made it, you know, um, made it, you know, he, he produced enough food where it was more than abundant. That's why it talks about uh, rivers of living water. It talks about uh, um, if you, you, you come to him that you, uh, you know, uh, have everlasting life because you was all you will always be able to eat. You know, the Lord, Yahweh Yahusha, always makes he always takes a little to show his power. He could do great things with a small number. Look at Gideon and his 300, you know. The real 300, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> but um verse 4. Then those men when they had seen the miracle that Yahweh did said this is of a truth that prophets should come into the world. When Yahweh therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again to a mountain himself alone. And, and you know, it made me think about how, uh, because you had people that actually witnessed him doing his miracles, and then um, what they do, you know, they departed him. They they say crucify him, because best believe most of the. I don't say most because I, you know, I don't know for sure, but I guarantee you it was had to be some among him when they were saying crucify him that knew that was the Messiah that was calling the Messiah when he was doing his miracles. And, you know, this is what that account made me think of. You know, it also made me think of because I was watching the Elder Yashawamba video. I think he did it with the brother from um, the elder brother. I think he's the head of their camp from Washington that, um, I think Trouble is Coming is the name of the video. I know it's on the Elder Yashua Wamba's page. And um, he was saying, don't be that guy that has been screaming for years, but then when you get in a situation of adversity or have to suffer loss, and you 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 you, you fold. Because you're seeing that now. That's why through the spirit, a lot of brothers are exonerating brothers to you know hold to their faith. Because it's one thing to say something, it's a whole totally another thing to actually have to go through it. You know, um, a brother in the camp, one of the heads made a statement. He said, don't just read the scriptures, you got to apply them. And that's the thing, that's wisdom, is applying it. You know, if you got the, you read a book on how a person or people, if you read books on how people re became millionaires, but you never apply the information that you that you read, how you ever going, you know what I mean? Now, I would suggest that right now. <laughs> this fucked up. I mean, this shit over with. But, I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, like, but but it's all set up, you know what I mean? Like, I, I know dudes at my job right now. We all work at the same lonely ass job, but yeah, I'm trying to get a Bitcoin and all that. And I'm, <laughs> but Salakia, not to digress. Uh, I'm going to skip because, like I said, time is of the essence. So, uh, I'm going to skip to verse 22, John 6 and 22. The day following when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save that one where into his disciples were entered and that Yahweh went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. How be it there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread after the, after that the Lord Yahweh or the, after that the Lord Yahweh had given thanks. When the peoples therefore saw that Yahweh was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Yahweh. Verse 25, and when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Yahweh answered them and said, verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Now, you got to, actually ingest what you you hear you know they said you didn't seek me because you believed in me or you actually believe in the miracles you seek me because of i fed you with food with something carnal and in the day of this trouble that's coming is approaching you're gonna have men that's been in this faith that's gonna fold because of the fact like the, the elder said, he said, you're going to have your organs talking to you. You're going to have brothers uh, or men, I'm going to say men's stomachs that's going to be talking to them, turning. You're going to have, he said, he made a statement. He said, that day, children are really going to rule over them. 
uh, or their parents because they're going to be looking at them kids like, how am I going to feed them? And they're setting up a system where if you don't adhere or basically make the covenant, which would be going to take this, going to fuck with this whore, um, Vanessa, you literally going to be watching your kids suffer. And that's going to be a hard pill to swallow for a parent. That's why you know it's going to have to be the spirit of the Lord on people to be able to walk away or deny their children. And that day, that's why it tells you woe um, to, to those that give suck in that day. Verse 27, labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him have Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai, the Father sealed. And that's the that's the point. Because he going to he's that bread, you know, um, you know, so with the coming situation that they're setting up, because basically it's about to be food surges. I and mean, if you got the eyes to see, you see, they setting it up where you're going to have to rely on them for all things. You know, we bring that scripture out. You're going to have to go to the one to your enemy for the one of all things. Well, now you about to really see it. You know, they setting up this, you know, that guy, um, Dave Hodges from the Common Sense Show, he, he, he said it's a report out here that you got a hundred Republicans literally going, making statements that literally this, 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 um, last budget bill or relief bill or whatever the fuck it's supposed to be literally is going to set up for a financial fall to, to basically, this is going to crack the dollar and Laura willingly it does, you know what I mean? And I, I could believe it. Wanna know why? Because I'm getting a lot of adversity right now dealing with this fucked up ass demon system. Now it is sifting season and all that, but also it's just like I could tell through the spirit something about to happen. Then you got dark winter approaching. You know, it's the spirit because I was just telling the brother that the lights went out in here, the power completely went out. Ain't no truck on the street or no shit like that. And then we got the weaker um, electrical company. You got two electrical companies in, in Cleveland that I know of. I mean, you know, the major ones rather. You got the the the, the illuminating that deals with the suburbs more so, and you got um, CPP, which is you know, and if you are and and, and now that I think about it, you, we've been having power problems off and on throughout the year, but literally just out the blue. Hey, no, no, no. I can see if they was working on something. Maybe they could be working on something in the area, but that's just. An indication to me, the Lord showing me, yeah, you're going to really have it in this area because it's going to affect Jake the most when they start fucking with the power. So, um, there's a lot coming and, you know, the spirit just jumped on me to do this lesson, um, because of the fact when you face with that adversity, you got to remember, that's why it's so important to eat the roll and build up your foundation you know, like the book of Matthew talks about um, that stood on a rock. Those that were, were um, planted or stood on a, you know what I mean? I don't want to butcher it and I don't feel like going to get it because like I said, time is of the essence. But, um, you know, when you face with those um, situations, you got to remain spiritual. You know, if your faith is in Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, then your faith got to remain in Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. Because Esau wants you to put your faith in him. You know, scriptures talk about trust in the Lord. Let me get that. <laughs> scriptures say, this is book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, with on thine heart and lean not Onto thine own understanding. And I can say first and foremost that I tend to do that. You know what I mean? But if you a faithful servant, it, you know, Paul called himself a prisoner. You know, we prisoners of hope. So you ain't got no power or no say so if you a prisoner. You just follow the will of your master. And if you truly say you serve Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, then it ain't what you like, it's what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah wants done. You know, I'm not going to get too personal because, you know, at the end of the day, I realized something. 
Sometimes you going through catching hell, but other brothers going through things too. And you tell your problems and they going through their own. And we at war right now. And you only as strong as your weakest link. You know, that's the whole, uh, you know, think about the counter judges with Gideon, you know. So, you know, um, in that video that they did, the elder made a, a, a hell of a point because he was saying how to learn both sides to be balanced. We had to, you know, literally learn good and evil. So, you know, Esau has corrupted and fucked up the whole planet. So based on, you know, um, you're going to be rewarded for your works. The Lord is about to reward this, this place with the works that Esau have done, but, you know, he about to send his judgment. And we're going to be in the midst of that. And I know people are going to be pondering like, well, damn, you know what I mean? But yeah, that's what it is. Because you, you got to remember, we went off, we broke the covenant as well. But the elect, man, you got to truly trust and believe are not going to be touched in that day. I got another scripture. You know, tells you that, um, that the elect are going to be exempt, meaning forgiven. Uh, it's oh, Romans chapter 4, uh, 20. This is Romans chapter 4. I'm going to start at verse 19. I'm going to start at verse 18. I'm going to start at verse 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100. It's lock it. That ain't what I really wanted. I'm going to get this. Um. Psalms 84 verse 12 it says Psalms 84 verse 11 for the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahshai is a son and a shield. The Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahushua will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Meaning, you know, that's a precept to um, Psalm 65. Um, talk about my servant shall eat. You know what I mean? Because you got to remember, in the Apocrypha, it talks about, um, you know, um, judgment is basically set aside for the wicked. You know, in the book of Psalms 91, it talks about how... Um, so a thousand will fall on thy side and ten thousand on the right, but on the, by thy right hand, none shall touch thee because the elect shall be covered in that day. It says, verse 12, O Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahushua of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. You know, it talks about, um, what's that? Um, where is it? Where is it? Um, Psalms 9. Uh, this is book of Psalms 9, verse 10. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, has not forsaken them that seek thee or that know thee. It tells you in the book of Proverbs um, 18, verse 10. That the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. You know, Book of Psalms 91 again says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. They shall be protected. And the, uh, the secret place is this truth. Another one. Um, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 7. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and whose hope the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is. 
Verse 8, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh. But her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. So when you read scriptures like with what's approaching, you know, and being that you have had your walk, because right now this is the training ground and you've had your walk in the truth. That's why you go through your different trials and tribulations to build up your faith. Because when you called, when you was suffering your adversities, you called on the name, Yahabashim Yahashah, and he delivered you. His name is, I mean, you know, Yahweh Shah's name is he saves, he delivers, he's deliverer. So I know if you in this truth and you've got uh, any kind of foundation, you have experienced something that was, uh, you know, adverse to you and you'll walk in this thing and you pray and, you know, the most high um, delivered you out of that. That's the building blocks of faith. You know, the elder Yashimabo said that. He said, you know, we have seen miracles. Uh, he was talking about one body, or he's talking about one of them camps. I, ain't, I don't want to, you know, make any false statements. I know, I think it was one body. but that, I know it was a camp that made a statement saying um, there wasn't a such thing as miracles. He said, well, what's coming? Your ass going to need a miracle. What are you talking about? <laughs> you, know, hey, you know, it tells you in scriptures we have no might. I mean, you got, I know being personally that take care of their children, but have no say so over how or what goes on in their children's life. This is how fucked up this place is for the Israelite man. And then you got silly ass Israelite men that want to keep this shit going. I work with a, a, a Jake all day. And it's funny too, because that's how you know it's a demon. I thought I escaped this motherfucker, right? <laughs> now nah, this motherfucker on second shift <laughs> at the end. <laughs> So when you see scriptures like this, you got to believe and not just believe, you got to know and trust. And that's what they mean by that confidence. You know what I mean? You got to know because, you know, scripture says that, uh, you know, uh, he says, it says multiple, multiple things, uh, you know, about how the, it's a scripture that talks about how the Lord. Hold on. Uh, bear with me for a second. There we go. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 32, verse 10. The Lord's unfailing love surrounds the man who trusts in him. Right. You know, that reminds me of, um, what's that in Psalms 116 about... Um, how to go? It, it talks about how. Um, let me find it real quick. Salakia. Psalms 116. I think it's 116 and 115. Precious is the death of the saints in the eyes of the Most High, something like that. Precious in the sight of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahshua, is the death of his saints. Because the Lord going to put a spirit on. You know, that means that you had unfailing loyalty and love to him. You know, that's what's so um, powerful about the account of Maccabees, about the, the, the brothers and the mother, the seven sons or whatever, that were tortured to death in the, for the name of Yah Bashim Yahusha. As a testimony. There was one other one I was going to get, but so when you read scriptures like, and with the times approaching, when you see scriptures like where it says, literally, this is the book of Isaiah chapter 65, verse 13, therefore thus saith the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry, behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty, behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed, because at the end of the day, you get like this is coming and only Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh you got to remember this is all ultimately his plan anyway so he's going to affect who you're going to have proud ass people that's literally going to be fucked up out here and you know a, a true man that's been walking this walk and sincerely been doing his work 
yeah, we might have had some hard times, but I can honestly say through all my ups and downs, like this probably been the worst year of my life as far as some of the shit I'm going through outside of the truth. But at the same time, now that I'm realizing, you know, this is actually all spiritual. So I'm grateful, you know what I mean? Because, you know, hard times got to breed hard men. So, again, like I say, you got to believe that because at the end of the day, if you don't, then that's doubt. And doubt is going to shake your faith. And without your faith and your trust in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh you can very well be one of those people that's going to fold in that day of adversity and go and get this juicy juice. And you don't want to do that. The elder Yahshua Wamba literally made a statement. He said, uh, just imagine, then a, sp a spirit jump on you or you become carnal Hey, go do this for whatever reason. I'm not even going to give an example for whatever reason. And then you still lose the job because the company fall out of business because it can't keep on going. Um, your, 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 your woman leave you. Your, something happened to your children. And you get sick or something. You know what I mean? Like it's all for not because the Lord, you know, it tells you in scripture the deceiver and the deceiver are both his. You know, and again, like I said, that's why, like I said, Accounts like um, with with Jonah, Jonah show you what not to do. You know what I mean? Because it's will, it's the will. It, you know, if it's something you're supposed to do, you're gonna do it regardless. That's what the account of Jonah showed me. It's better to just do it as opposed to doing it. Because the 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 Lord might not kill you, but he could he could you could be an elect, but still we get like the Lord chastises us. <laughs> what do you mean? So he could. He can chastise you in a way that he don't take your life, but you, you know me, I mean? And that's a scary thing. So, I mean, it just jumped on my spirit to, you know, do this because I was reading and like, I'm like, wow, well, yeah, you know, because at the end of the day, you ain't got to worry about carnally eating nothing if you spiritually, you know, supping with your how about shimmy how shot. So if you're a so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, Seminole, Indian, West Indian, or Haitian, I implore you to come back to the laws, to the statutes, and to the commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, or you will be destroyed. And with that, I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory to Paul Loyam, La Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Racha, Kodash Brakatham. Double honors to the apostles and to the elders, a great millstone who do rule well. Peace and salutations to the Akim across the four corners of the earth, pushing his truth with faith and with sincerity, as well as risking their lives and their freedom to do so. Now more so than ever. Shalom to the Akwath and the Akim out there listening and learning. Lord willingly, this is an edifying video. Shalom to the Israelites, foreigners scattered abroad in a land of other nations appearing like the other nations, but whom subscribe to this truth. To you, I say Shalom. Until next time, I'm able to come with another lesson. Shalom, Shalom. And my wife, Lava Ball. Shalom.